asking, where is Li Bo? You're the only person who could ask the central authorities about it. Even if you're not going to get an answer, at least you must try to ask. Apart from Li Bo as an isolated incident, um, we are talking about the relations between the mainland and Hong Kong and one country, two systems. I attach a lot of importance to um, the matter. I would use every ways and means, uh, feasible ways and means to resolve the matter. According to tradition, the chairman of LegCo's House Committee is meant to move the motion of thanks within two weeks after the CE delivers his policy address. But a number of opposition lawmakers, including those from the Civic Party, have already said they will not support the motion when it comes up. Wen Wang, TVB News. Well, it wasn't just Long Chung Ying under fire today. His deputy, Carrie Lam, was forced to defend the policy address. The chief secretary today refuted accusations that the government isn't doing much for Hong Kong's disadvantaged. Diane To has that story. Amid accusations that Chief Executive Long Chen Ying didn't offer much yesterday to narrow the city's wealth gap, the Chief Secretary for Administration today called on critics not to look at one policy address in isolation. A lot of big ticket items in improving people's livelihood have been introduced in previous policy addresses, including two entirely new social security schemes. In fact, if you look back at history, I don't think any government has done so extensively uh, within such a short period in terms of social security improvements. Carrie Lam was among the officials who explained in more detail today proposals unveiled in the latest policy address. One of her new roles is to chair an interdepartmental committee that aims to implement the climate change blueprint published by the Environment Bureau last year. The achievement of the objectives in the plan require, requires cross-sector and cross-bureau uh, cooperation. My job is to uh, coordinate the various uh, parties within administration to work in concert towards one major objective, that we have pledged to reduce energy intensity by 40 percent by the year 2025. On regulating employment agencies for foreign domestic helpers, the Secretary for Labour and Welfare said a new code of practice will have a list of do's and don'ts for these agencies to follow. But if after a certain period of implementation, uh, if the code does not really have an effect in terms of improving this, the whole situation, I do not rule the possibility of enacting, in other words, making it statutory, uh, changing the law. He said the government would also consider raising the penalty to make regulation more effective. Diane Toh, TVB News. Well, the government also came under more fire for its new kindergarten policy, with critics questioning why it isn't free for all kids in Hong Kong. Ani Samtani tells us more. The government's free kindergarten education scheme will be implemented from 2017 onwards. But some parents in schools are crying foul because not all the students will have their tuition waived. About 70 to 80 percent of students at part-time non-profit making kindergartens won't have to pay tuition. Secretary for Education Eddie Ng said today it's impossible to implement free kindergarten education across the board. Ng explained that the government would like to make kindergarten education free for more kids, but noted that the schools are different and so it's difficult to provide a one-size-fits-all scheme. If you look at the about 900 or about 1,000 uh, kindergartens in Hong Kong, and uh, they're around 25 percent of those uh, very much privately owned and run. Some of those are international kindergartens as well. They have their own particular operating style, including the operating uh, expenses mode. As such, they would have to uh, charge quite a lot of fees and they will be the different category because this is the parents' choice. But a concern group says what was announced yesterday is not good enough. This is not satisfactory because we are expecting all the children within the age group will be able to receive free education. So uh, we demand the government actually to lay out the plan to implement free kindergarten for all children within a time frame. The alliance also urged the government to set up a salary scale and provide a clear career development path for educators. And it recommends the setting up of a regular policy review mechanism and a platform for teachers to voice their suggestions. Ronnie Samtani, TVB News. Police say a bomb threat received by staff at the Legislative Council this evening was a hoax. 
The Legislative Council Secretariat reportedly received an email at about 5 p.m. saying there was a bomb in the building that would detonate at 6 o'clock. Staff called the police, but they decided not to evacuate the building. Officers did search the entire LegCo complex. They checked the demonstration area, the library, restaurants, and toilets, searching through drawers and trash cans, but police did not find anything suspicious. Overseas again, Washington is breathing a sigh of relief after Tehran returned a, a 10 U.S. sailors whose boats went astray in Iranian waters. Now both sides are framing the incident as a triumph of diplomacy and a sign of the new friendship between the once hostile foes. Crisis averted. Less than a day after 10 U.S. Navy sailors were detained in Iran when their boats drifted into Iranian waters, they and their two vessels were back with the American fleet. Images released by Iran's Revolutionary Guard showed the nine men and one woman in detention after one of their boats suffered mechanical problems near an outpost in the middle of the Persian Gulf. One of the unidentified sailors later appeared on state TV. It was a mistake. That was our fault. And we apologize for our mistake. The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. But before the return of the U.S. crew, confusion and concern flared when some Iranian officials suggested Washington would have to apologize for the incident before the release of the sailors. Iranian commanders later determined the mishap was not intentional. It turned out that they were under psychological pressure and did not act in a professional and responsible manner. The U.S. Secretary of State, who used his close relationship with Iran's foreign minister to help resolve the matter, issued a statement expressing gratitude to Iranian authorities, but no apology. And I think we can all imagine how a similar situation might have played out three or four years ago. And that is a testament to the critical role that diplomacy plays in keeping our country safe, secure, and strong. For Tehran, the American swift release was a way to neutralize a potential new flashpoint days before it's expected to meet the terms of last summer's nuclear deal, which will give Iran significant relief from painful economic sanctions. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy says for now the priority is determining exactly how the sailors found themselves in Iran. Well, entertainment news to pass along. The Revenant leads this year's Academy Awards as the Oscar nominations were announced tonight. The Frontier Saga starring Leonardo DiCaprio has 12 nominations. It also sets director Alejandro Iratu for a possible back-to-back -back win following his Best Picture winning Birdman last year. George Miller's Mad Max Fury Road followed with 10 nominations, including Best Picture. Ridley Scott sci-fi epic The Martian landed seven nominations. In sports, more action and goals in the English Premier League last night as another three-all draw was played out. This time it was Liverpool and Arsenal who shared the spoils. Tony Sabine reports. It was another six-goal thriller in the English Premiership last night as Liverpool and Arsenal went head-to-head -head at Anfield. The Reds took the lead twice through Roberto Firmino, but Arsenal struck back with goals from Aaron Ramsey and Olivier Giroud in a blistering 25 minutes. Giroud grabbed his second to make it 3-2 10 minutes into the second half, but the visitors could not hold on and Joe Allen came off the bench to net an equaliser in the 90th minute and snatch a share of the points. Like Man U the other night, Arsenal were left frustrated. The frustration comes from the fact that uh, I think a 3-2 we had uh, three situations where we should have made 4-2 and we made the bad decision. And uh, that is for me the frustration tonight and after that, of course, the fact that we conceded a uh, uh, goal in the last minute. They tried everything, but at the, really everything, and did a, a, a long time really, really good. I was really satisfied with this, but at the end, if you want to win and we wanted to win against Arsenal, yeah, you need this... Um, you cannot have these lacks of um, concentration, which we had. The draw dashed Arsenal's chance of moving into the outright lead of the Premiership and allowed Leicester to creep back into contention. The Foxes beat Arsenal's London rivals Tottenham 1-0 and are behind the Gunners only on goal difference. It was a difficult match, very difficult, because Tottenham, in my opinion, are one of the, the best teams. 
Some other big teams endured draws last night as well, including Manchester City, who finished nil-nil with Everton. And a late equaliser also deprived Chelsea of victory, with the champions held to a two-all draw at home to West Brom. Tony Sabine, TVB News. FIFA has fined the Hong Kong Football Association 10,000 Swiss francs, that's about 78,000 Hong Kong dollars, over some local fans booing of the national anthem during a World Cup qualifier two months ago. The incident happened at Hong Kong Stadium last November. Some of the fans booed the national anthem before the match between the Hong Kong and Chinese national teams. According to a statement by the Football Association, FIFA's disciplinary committee said the local body is liable for the improper conduct among the supporters of its team. The fine is double the penalty handed earlier to the Football Association for a similar incident in September last year. FIFA is warned of harsher sanctions in future if fans misbehave again. More sad news this week from the London entertainment scene. British actor Alan Rickman, whose career ranged from Britain's Royal Shakespeare Company to the Harry Potter films, has died. He was 69. Rickman's family says the actor had been battling cancer. Rickman excelled at playing villains like the character Hans Gruber in the first Die Hard movie. His film roles included Truly, Madly, Deeply, Love Actually, and the Potter films, in which he played the ambiguous dark arts teacher, Professor Snape. Here are the Mark VI numbers. They are 1, 2, 10, 23, 32, 49. The extra number tonight is 26. Finally, the weather cloudy with some rain tomorrow and a high of 17 degrees. The outlook, heavy rain and cooler temperatures expected on Sunday. That's all the news. I'm James Aiken. Good night. Earth Live was co-sponsored by Peonia Diamond. You're watching TVB Pearl. Out shortly we present Crazy World Stories. Stay with us. 60 Minutes goes inside the Syrian base from which Russia is launching airstrikes. And 